Hello friends, welcome to video series on geography. My name is Manjunath and this is my blog. You can find all the text files in this blog. Previously, I've done videos on continental drift theory, seafloor spreading and plate tectonics. In this video, I'll be explaining the similarities and differences between all these concepts. So these are the videos I've already done, that is Earth's interior, Earth movements and in tectonics, I've completed videos on continental drift theory, seafloor spreading and plate tectonics. So in this video, we'll see the comparison between all these three theories. The first theory we studied is continental drift theory, which was suggested by Alfred Wegener in 1920s. According to his theory, there was a huge continent called as Pangaea, which was surrounded by a huge ocean called as Panthalassa. And the northern part of the continent was called as Laurasia, whereas the southern part was called as Gondwana land. So we have studied all this in detail. So we need not go further. So according to him, the drift started about 200 million years ago and the drift is still continuing. And the next important theory is seafloor spreading. In this theory, we have seen how convection currents in Earth supplies force for these oceanic plates to diverge. So the, usually the interaction between these plates, plates is divergence. We have seen how there is a fissure kind of volcano which throws out basic magma and this magma spread, spreads on each side of the vent spreading to a very long distance giving rise to a new kind of rocks and these rocks are very young in nature as a result there is constant spreading of seafloor and this is all about seafloor spreading and in plate tectonics Theory is mainly folk based on the division of Earth's lithosphere into various continental and oceanic plates. There are oceanic plates, usually like Pacific plate, and then we have continental plates like Eurasian plates. And there is constant interaction between these plates due to forces generated by Earth's um, convection currents in mantle. So this is all about plate tectonics. And seafloor spreading was suggested by Harry Hess, whereas plate tectonics was suggested in 1960s by many scientists and with the introduction of continent seafloor spreading and plate tectonics the theory of continental drift theory was discarded for being too general in nature and this was not that is continental drift theory was not backed by very well supported evidences we'll see that so this is all about the theory so coming to forces which gave rise to these movements Alfred Wegener explained that the pole fleeing force, that is the force which makes continents to move towards the equator, as well as buoyancy, that is the force generated by water which tries to uplift continents, and then tidal force, which is a direct resultant of rotation of Earth, which gives rise to a force which pushes the continents towards east, were all the forces which are responsible for continental drift theory. Uh, that is drifting of continents. So according to this theory, we, see, we have seen that North America and South America have moved westwards whereas Australia has moved eastwards and India has moved northwards towards equator and collided with Asian plate. So the forces are pole fleeing force, centripetal or uh, the force generated by Earth's rotation and then tidal force. Coming to seafloor spreading, the forces mainly what due to convectional currents. So there is no other factor which influences seafloor spreading except convectional currents in mantle. And the same forces were responsible for plate tectonics as well. So what are the evidences which supported these theories? The continental drift theory was mainly based on evidences which are apparent, that is what we can see through eye and visualize. But these evidences were very general in nature as a result the theory failed to be explained with a proper scientific backing. So according, according to this theory, the forces could be backed by various theories like the apparent affinity or similar borders of continents. And then we have various other proofs like fossils of plants and animals. Other than this, we have, we have talked about Gondwana glacial lands, which are part of India, 
Africa, Antarctica, Australia and South America. So all these things were proofs of or evidences of continental drift theory. In seafloor spreading, the major proof is paleomagnetism or rocks with magnetic properties. We have seen how rocks are which are equidistant, equidistant from the fissure have aligned themselves. This was mainly due to reversal of magnetic field. We have studied this in detail. So the major important evidences are paleomagnetism and nature of rocks where the rocks near the fissure were anger and with great distances the rocks became much older and oceans have very anger rocks compared to continents. So all these are evidences of seafloor spreading and the evidences of plate tectonics are quite similar to seafloor spreading except that we have few, few more evidences like gravitational an anomaly and then we have temperature difference just like in seafloor spreading. So, so what are the differences of these theories? So continental drift theory doesn't take oceans into consideration. It only talks about continents. This is a very important concept of sea, uh, con continental drift theory. That is, it talks only about continents and it, con it takes into consideration of continents as different entities separated from oceans. So usually continental drift theory says that continents are floating in a huge part of oceans. So continental drift theory completely ignores oceans. Whereas the seafloor spreading theory, this theory talks only about the oceanic plates. It doesn't help us understand the interaction between ocean and continental plates as well as two continental plates. So this theory only talks about oceanic plates and it ignores continents. Whereas the plate tectonics theory deals with both continental plates as well as oceanic plates. Also it explains about interaction between all kinds of plates that is continent ocean oceanic plates and then ocean continent and then continent continent plates. So this theory is complete in nature. So this is the most widely accepted theory and the complete theory that explains about earth's lithospheric plates and their interaction. So coming to acceptance, the theory of continental drift theory was completely discarded with the introduction of seafloor spreading theory. And seafloor spreading theory, as I've already said, it only deals with oceanic plates. As a result, even this is a partial theory, not a complete one. The fully accepted theory is plate tectonics. So the major point here is continental drift theory, which is a failed one. And then seafloor spreading, which is partially accepted theory. And then we have plate tectonics, which is completely accepted theory. And this is a little information about comparison. So in the previous mains exam, there was question on continental drift theory. So this time or in next exams, usually seafloor spreading and plate tectonics will be important concepts. And also a creative way of asking a question would be compare and contrast between these theories. So we should be prepared for all these kind of scenarios. So in, the, in this perspective, I have explained about these videos. So if you like my videos, please like my Facebook and visit my blog and also subscribe to my channel. And thanks for watching.